What kind of books did you read for in preparation for that episode? In general, all of the topics, there are like common books I use. And maybe some topics I might use other books and I may not use it in this particular topic. But generally what I do is I first of all go to the Quran. And I see that to be very important for me because again, as I mentioned, the Quran is the source of legislation for every single Muslim who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment. So I always go to the Quran first. And when I look at the Quran, I always look at the Quran based on the exegesis, um, which is the explanation, the commentary that the great scholars of Islam have poured on it. Mm. The tafsir. The tafsir book. So I go to definitely first of all, tafsir al uh, or tafsir al sorry, first. Mujir al Tabri's tafsir is considered for, to be from the uh, tafsir al Ma'thur, which is that his tafsir, you benefit from it, the quote of the early Salaf, the pious predecessors. The ones that the Prophet Sallallahu told us nasi qarni yalunahum, yalunahum. That the best generation are my generation And those to come after and those to come after So Ibn Jarir Tabari what he would do is he would bring an ayah And he would give you the tafsir of the Sahab And the Tabi'in and the Atba'u Tabi'in And I really love to know their commentary first Before anybody else And a lot of the times Ibn Jarir Tabari rahimahullah, When he brings the tafsir uh, And it's really يعني, Happens that the tafsir is يعني, uh, تفسير, uh, التضاد, because the tafsir is two types okay. There is tafsir which is التنوع and tafsir التضاد Tafsir التنوع means they're all saying uh, Different wordings but really You can you can reconcile between their views Qatad is saying something Suddi is saying something Mujahid is saying something Ikrim is saying something Hassan al-Basri is saying something Qatad is saying something But when you look at it it's It's easy to reconcile between their views So it's not a big problem that's for example, cool. they're just looking at an iPad, or obviously we're looking at an iPad. And people describe it in different ways. Someone might say this is this is Habit. an Apple product. Someone might say this is grey. Someone might say this is big. Like just, yeah. but they haven't contradicted each other in any way. Yeah, yeah, I'm true. It's true. So it's called اختلاف التنوع, and the second type is called اختلاف التضاد, which is that uh, the views are going against one another. One is saying something. Like for example, أولا مستم النساء, which we mentioned in some of the episodes, the word lams, the two mm. views of Ibn Abbas and Ibn Mas'ud are contradicting one another. Because based on that, there's going to be a khilaf, a dispute in this matter. Sure. So, great Mufassirin like Ibn Jarir Tabari will try to reconcile between their views after that. And I like how he does the tarjih and how he strengthens it. Rahimahullah, rahmatan wa So I always go to his tafsir, tafsir uh, al-Allama Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, the great Mufassir. He's considered to be, or they refer to him as Imam al-A'imma. Um, uh, they call him, sorry, Imam al-A'imma is, Imam al-A'imma is uh, Abu Bakr ibn Khuzayma, sorry. They call him Imam al-Mufassirin. Ibn Jarrah al-Tabari rahimahullah ta'ala I also go to Tafsir al-Baghawi which is a very summarized kitab like in Allah it's very important kitab Tafsir al-Baghawi rahimahullah ta'ala Tafsir ibn Abi Hatim I go to it as well Tafsir al yeah, Ibn Kathir al-Si'li I also go to Tafsir al-Amin al-Shanqayta rahimahullah I really think it's very important I've quoted him quite a lot yeah. his Tafsir is is, 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 is a it's a unique, one of the unique tafsirs out there. And he proved the concept that the scholars mention, which is, Kam tarak al awwalu lil akhir. How many, yani how much has the early scholars have left behind for, for the ones to come later? So, yani you would think to yourself, how many books of tafsir have been written? Can really someone come after and write a tafsir book? Like in Muhammad ibn Shaqiti recently, yani compiled this tafsir book, which proves you the writing of tafsir is always going to be happening. It's one of the miracles of the Quran. Subhanallah. It's ajeeb, Allah. And what he does, subhanAllah, is so unique. I honestly, he's he's one of the early books I go to in the tafsir of an ayah, if I want to see it. Because he speaks he speaks about it from a from a perspective of language, from a perspective of usul al-fiqh. He speaks about it from a perspective of balagha and bayan al badi And his kitab is actually called, it's called Adwa'u al-Bayani fi Idahi al-Qur'ani bil-Qur'an. So he does that best type of tafsir of the Qur'an, which is tafsir of the Qur'an with the Qur'an. Yeah. So if he gets an ayah here, he'll explain it with another ayah. Right, right. Yeah. Rahimahullah, And the way he does it is so, it's so unique, rahimahullah ta'ala. So I really go back to it. Okay. Um, I also go to kutub al-qira'at when it comes to Quran. If I'm looking at an ayah, if it has different qira'at, I like to, especially if I see that Ibn Jarir mentions it in his tafsir, or Ibn Kathir mentions it, or Baghawi mentions it, or they mention, or Amin al mentions it, I like to look it up even more and research a bit more into it. So I go to the nashr, fi al-qira'at al-ashr. By Ibn al-Jazir rahimahullah I'll look into it more He'll explain it even more He'll expand on it i look into it um, uh, Also I, I will look at the Shatibi's Ushaq al-Shatibi's Hirz al-Amani Which we turn in the Qara'at al-Sab' And the Shuruhat and explanations put in it Kutub al-Hadith Would be the second place I'll go to Generally okay. speaking 
I'd go to the um, Sahih al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, Imam al-Bukhari Sahih, because it's the most authentic kitab, Ba'da Kitab Allah Azza wa Jalla. The great Imam, Imam al-Iraqi, he says, وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ أَلَّفَ فِي وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ أَلَّفَ فِي الصَّحِيحِ محمد وخص بالترجيح ومسلم بعد وبعض الغرب مع أبي علي فضلوا ذا لو نفع So the most first person to have written an authentic book is Imam al-Bukhari رحمه الله uh, So I go to that kitab if the hadith uh, is mentioned or I can find I, I need a hadith and it's in Bukhari uh, I go to Sahih al-Bukhari first okay. I look at the, 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 the bab that Bukhari put it under I look at under the chapter and he puts it under I would also look at the explanation of firstly Ibn Kathir, Ibn Hajar, sorry, Fathul Bari. I'd first of all look at the Fathul Bari of Ibn Hajar, Al-Asqalani, Rahimahullah. Second, I would go to is the Fathul Bari of Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali. Because Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali's Fathul Bari, a student of knowledge cannot be without it. Because he brings you Aqwal al-Salaf a lot. Mawaqif al-Salaf, you won't find it as much as you find it in Ibn Rajab, Ibn mm-hmm. Kathir, hata, Ibn Hajar, sorry. Ibn, I keep saying Ibn Kathir Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani He doesn't bring you as much Of the mawaqif al-salaf The way Ibn Rajab does Ibn Rajab subhanAllah Sometimes he will explain A whole hadith With the aqwal of the salaf <laughs> Like Ibn Jarid does With the eye of the Quran So it's, in, it's very unique And he took the name Ibn Hajar From uh, He took it from uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani Took it from Ibn Rajab Who's before him Ibn Rajab wrote The Kitab Fathul Bari And he passed away in Kitab al-Janais oh, wow. Ibn Rajab yeah, The chapter of funeral Ibn Rajab died there And if he didn't finish the book If he finished it Subhanallah Subhanallah So Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali's Kitab so, yeah, There's a muhaqqiq of the Kitab Sharh al-Ila al-Tirmidi By uh, Hammam Sa'id or, uh, Yeah it was Hammam Sa'id uh, He mentioned something like Nuri, uh, There's two muhaqqiqat of uh, Sharh al-Ila al-Tirmidi Nuri Dini Itan and Hammam uh, Abdul Rahim Sa'id Hammam mentioned something like uh, Ibn Hajar didn't Copy the name from Ibn Rajab Because he never saw it But that's incorrect Because I, I saw in Fathul Bari Twice at least He quoted from Ibn Rajab al ah, okay. So he must have taken the name from him mm. uh, Also Sahih Muslim Would be the second kitab I'd go to If the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim I'd also go to Sahih Muslim And I'd look at the Sharh of Imam Nawi Rahimahullah ta'ala Nawi's explanation is profound it's, it's amazing And then I'll go to The other books The third book I'd generally go to Is Al-Muwatta Imam Malik Rahimahullah ta'ala and Muwatta Malik, I would look at the riwayah of Yahya ibn Yahya al Laythi, because that's the last and the most great, that's the best copy of uh, the Muwatta. And I won't go to, you know, yani comparing the different riwayat of Muwatta, but I would sure. go to that one first. And I'd I'd be happy with that one. Okay. And that's the one that Ibn, ibn Abdul Bar, you know, used for his Tamheed and his Tithkar, both of them. And I'd go to those two kitabs, Tamheed by Ibn Abdul Bar and also the Istidkar by Ibn Abdul Bar. And there's a difference between the two. Many people don't know. The Tamheed, it more focuses on the Sana'atul Hadithiyah. Mm-hmm. It focuses more on the Hadithi pers- perspective. It more deals with the Hadith and the Marfu'at. Okay? It deals with more with what's attributed to the Prophet والسلام, Whereas the Istidkar deals with more with the Mawqufat and the, the Sana'a al fiqhiyah the Fiqhi issues. So if I'm really wanting to focus on a fiqhi issue, I'll go to the istidkar. And if I wanted to go to more to the issue related to the hadith itself, I'll go to the tamheed by Ibn Abdul Bar. Okay. Uh, Bashar Awad's ma'roof's tahqiq is so far the best. Even him, he's been critiqued for some of the point, some of the you know, any mistakes that he were found from his manuscripts that he relied on. Bashar Awad ma'roof. Um, but that would be the in terms of hadith. And I would also look at the other kutub al-hadith like Sharh al-Sunan Imam al-Baghawi and Al Muntaqa by Ibn al Jarud and you know Musnad Ahmed, I would look at it with the Fatah Rabbani, Mu'jam al Tabarani, if the hadith is there. Kutub al Hadith, I would focus more on the Daru Ta'asil Taba'ah. I wouldn't try to look at any other Taba'at because the other Taba'at are not so, so far, they're not. Sahih ibn Khuzayma, Sahih Sunan al Darimi, Sunan al Bayhaqi, I would look at those Kutub al Hadith, uh, give a lot of importance to it. Just to know the different. Uh, I did rely a lot on when I was looking at the athar of the Sahabas, Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba. I looked at it a lot. I compared the Muhammad Awamas one and Sheikh Sa'ana Shitri's Taba'at. I look at both of those two copies. Um, Tarh al Tathrib, I'd look at it by Al Iraqi. I mm. really think it's powerful. Riyadh al Salihin is very important for me, especially the Nawawi, the chaptering he puts it, where he places it in. I, I like it. If the hadith is also, in, sometimes I can't be, 
you know able to go to the hadith from the the big books like yeah. Sunan al-Bayhaqi or Khan Lukhati but Sunan Abi Dawood and Shuruhat of Sunan Abi Dawood like Aunul Ba'bud or Tuhfatul Ahwadi I just stick to Subul Salam by Amir Sanani Amir Sanani has an explanation on Bulug al-Maram so I'd look at that from Shawkani Naylul Al-Taraf used it from so especially from music perspective I looked at it a lot Kutub al-Takhrij authenticating and grading the hadith that you sometimes brought in the podcast you were discussing with me, yes. I would go to the Kitab Takhris uh, al-Habir, which is Ibn Hajar's uh, Kitab in Takhrij al-Hadith. I'd go to Ibn Mulaqin's Kitab Tuhfat al-Muhtaj, Nasb uh, al-Raya by Zayla'i, Nata'ij al-Afkar by Ibn Hajar. I'd go to the Kitab Tuhfat al-Tari by Ibn Kathir, Al-Mawdu'at by Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala, and Ila al-Mutanahiyya by Ibn al-Jawzi as well. Al-Badr al-Munir also, I uh, looked at it, but I don't fully use the Badr al-Munir because of the fact that I, I suffice myself with the Talqis al-Habir. Like for example, Al-Mizan al-Aytidal by Dhabi, for example, I would really focus more on Lisan al-Mizan because I like Ibn Hajar's, you know, for example, the Tahdib, Abu, uh, tahdib, al, uh, the tahdib of Abu al-Hajjaj al-Mizi, for example, Tahdib al-Kamal by Abu al-Hajjaj al-Mizi, I wouldn't really focus too much on it. I'll look at it here and there, but majority of my focus would be the Tahdib al-Tahdib by Ibn Hajar. Okay. Because I like tahdib, Ibn Hajar's you know, Nukat and his Ta'liqat and his, I give a lot of Albani's uh, Irwa'ul Ghalil I really looked at it, it's a hadith sahih and ba'ifa it's one of my early books that I go to, I look at Sheikh Nasser's authentication of hadith, that doesn't mean I always blind follow what he says <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> but I like to see what Sheikh Nasser has to say about it, we're smiling it. because obviously it came up in the niqab uh, issue, which yeah. I'm sure we'll come to, but yeah Kutub uh, al like the narrators and a bit about who they are and, and if I want to research more I don't, I'm not convinced with the Sheikh Albani's arguments I go to Kutub al Rijal, I look at the Du'afa by Uqayli, I look at the Kabil for Du'afa by Ibn Adi. With Ibn Adi, one, I like the tahqiq of Sheikh Mazir, 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 Sheikh Mazir al Sirsawi. Sheikh Mazir al Sirsawi's tahqiq, he personally gave it to me when I went to, when, when I was in Qasim. Wow. I actually met him wow. in Qasim. And he actually gave me the copy himself. Tariq al Ausud by Bukhari, I look at that. Ilal by Ahmad ibn Hanbal. The Ilal of Ali Ibn Ahmad, I like the tahqiq of Sheikh Wasullah Abbas. Okay, and I use that a lot. Tariq Abi Zura al Damashqi, I like that. Al Hajjad al Mizah, I said already, his Tahdib, I would use it, it's 35 volumes, Bashar Awad Maruf's one, but I wouldn't use it as much as I would use the Tahdib al Tahdib by Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. And Sir Alam al Nubala, I must go to for me. Mizan al Atidal, I also look at it, but not as much as I look at Lisan al Mizan by Ibn Hajar. I like that more. Tahdib al Abstaha al Ghudda. Uh, what's funny is that uh, oh, Good news for the students of knowledge Is Tahdib al-Tahdib Inshallah soon Darul Birr is going to publish it Inshallah okay, Inshallah Tahdib al-Tahdib Ibn Hajar Sorry Also the Kitab al-Du'afa Al-Nasai And Dar Qutni Is Ilal Dar Qutni is Ilal Means a lot to me And I really Ilal Warida Ajarhu al-Ta'adil Ibn Abi Hatim Abdul Rahman Ibn Abi Hatim The son of Abu Hatim al-Razi And Kitab al-Majruhin Ibn Hibban Those are books I look at Kutub al-Mustalah Sometimes just check up Mas'ala on al-Mustalah I'd go to mainly two kitabs and the rest are just go to if there's a need for it I'd go to the Fatuh al-Mughith by Sakha which is the Sharh of Al-Fit al-Iraqi and I think that majority of time I just stick, stick to that Kutub al-Mustalah mm. if I feel like I want to see more and I want to look at more I go to and the second kitab I, I go to a lot with the Fatuh al-Mughith is the Tadrib al-Rawi by Suyuti I think these two kitabs are very important for me beyond that I look at it just, in, just if I need more I look at the kitab معرفة الحديث by حاكم أو look at the تقييد والإضاح by عراقي أو look at the مك the كتاب sorry نخبة الفكر اختصار علوم الحديث and others like that كتب العقيدة all of the books of Sheikh Al Sam Taymiyyah yeah I would look at any all the كتب of Sheikh Al Sam Taymiyyah and his student Ibn Al Qayyim I don't give any exception to that يعني the all of their books are important for me so مختصر سواء يقول مرسلة I'll take that كتاب and I'll look at it and give it importance the نوني Ibn Al Qayyim I'll look at it um, very important Rahimahullah Rahmatan Wasi'ah Yani Ibn Al-Qayyim And he's the teacher His teacher at Ibn Taymiyyah I believe any student of knowledge Who does not read their works You can always see that They, they feel empty mm. You can always tell Ibn They've Taymiyyah, got gaps They've got There's gaps. a gap missing yeah. from you um, Al-Shari'a Al-Imam Al-Ajurri Rahimahullah Ta'ala Al-Rajjah Al-Jahmiya By Darimi Sharh Usul Al-Itiqad Ahli Sunnah By Abu Qasim Hibatullah Allah Lakai Sharh Sunnah By Abdullah Ibn Ahmed Ibn Hanbal uh, Kitab al-Sunnah ibn Abi Asim I look at that um, I quoted a lot from the Kitab Risalat al-Sijzi 
by ila ahli zabid i quoted that from when i was talking about harf was salt i read that ma'arij al qubul the sharh of salum al wusul ila ilm al by half al hakim the three volumes with the tahqiq of halaq that ibn al-jawzi i really go back to that law kutub al fiqh Mainly, I go back to two kitabs. When it, if I want to look at fiqh al-muqaran, three books, three books mainly. Muhalla ibn Hazmin, Mujmu' by Nawawi, and the kitab al-Mughni ibn Qudama. Those are three, compar- they are, I consider them to be comparative fiqh. I mean, they are comparative fiqh. They're called fiqh al-muqaran, which before was never called fiqh al-muqaran. This name fiqh al-muqaran is a, is a contemporary name that was given to it. Like in the early scholars, they used to call it al-khilafiyat. Comparing between the, the different madhabs. The different madhabs. Okay. So I, I generally go to Al-Mughni what Ibn Qudama said Mughni is an explanation of the kitab Mukhtasar Al-Khiraqi Ibn Qudama is explaining Mukhtasar Al-Khiraqi And Nawawi is explaining the Muhaddab Al-Ishaq Al-Shirazi Al-Majmu'ah I like to go to those two And I like to look at Ibn Hazm and his Muhalla It's very important for me Those three books give me an understanding of The views in the issues of fiqh But I also understand a very important point And I want also students of knowledge to understand it Which is Ibn Qudama's quoting of the madhab of the Han- Hanafiya, for example, mm. or the madhab of the Malikiya or madhab of Shafi'iya is always not accurate. Because okay. that's not his madhab. Yeah, he's a Hanbali. So when I look at it, I look at it as an overview just to understand it. But I also go to their madhab books and I look at it. Uh, uh, I, I don't always just stick to the, the, the referencing. Yeah. Also, I'll also Ibn Mundir as well. The also the Ibn Mundir would fall into the fourth book for me. I really think it's very important. Also, um, then of course Kutub al-Shafi'iyya and Kutub al-Madahibs I'll go into it Usul al-Fiqh I, I, I love to go to Sharh al-Kawqib al-Munir it's very important for me and of course the Maraq al-Su'ud the Mubtaghi al-Ruqi wa-Su'ud by Abdullah ibn Hajj al-Shanqiti I go to that kitab and I'm re- I mainly focus on the Nashr al-Bunud Nashr al-Sharah I use the Nashr al-Bunud um, also Ishad al-Fuhul I really like it Shawkani rahimahullah ta'ala because it's Tahqiq fi ilm al-Usul he's Shokani is not held back by a madhab. Mm. So he's, yeah. I, I like uh, his views. So there's mainly three kitabs, or four kitabs in Usul al-Fiqh I really go back to. Irshad al-Fuhul by uh, uh, Muhammad Ali Shokani. The kitab Maraq al-Su'ud, the Mubtagh al-Ruqi al-Su'ud, the Nashr al-Bunud. I go back to that. I think it's important. Kawqab al-Munir, and also the Al-Bahr al-Muhid by Zarkashi. Those are the main books. Qawaid al fiqhiyya because Qawaid al fiqhiyya is like really, especially the three madahibs, Malikiyya, Shafi'iyya, and Hanabila, are not really far from each other. Mm. I don't really yani, go too deep into it. I mm. like yani, two kitabs generally. Al Qawaid al fiqhiyya by Hafid ibn Rajab's one, ibn Rajab's Qawaid book. And I also like the Al Qawaid al Muthib, Al Majumu al Muthab, Fi Qawaid al Madhab by Salahuddin al-Ala al-Kaykildi rahimahullah al-Shafi'i His kitab al-Majmu' al-Mudhab fi qawaid al-Madhab is a kitab al-Qayyim jiddan and they, mashallah the Wizara of oh, Kuwait have published it mm. um, those, are the, those are the two main ones I use um, Tariq of course I look at the kitab uh, Tariq al-Islam by Dhahabi for example Al-Bidai wa Nihai ibn Kathir rahimahullah Shudur al-Dhahab ibn Ibadin wa Fayyat al-Ayyal ibn Khalikhan and all those kitabs if, if I need to if it's Particular individuals, I want to look at their lives now. I always go to, like for example, Ibn Taymiyyah. I will go to a kitab al-Uqud al-Durriya fi ba'di manaqib shaykh al-Sam Taymiyyah by Ibn Abdul Hadi. I'll focus on that and I'll read that. Also, kitab al-Badr al-Tali' by Shawkan is also very good. Al-Dura al-Kaminan is also, Ibn Hajar is very good. I like to read that. If it's the ulama al-Da'wa al-Najdiya and their, 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 their life, which we haven't really done much on, no. I like to go to Abdullah Bassam's kitab, ulama al-Najd, khilal al-Thamaniyyah, al-Qurun. Nahu to be honest, me, I, I focus more on just Al-Fiyat al-Malik and Sharh ibn Aqil. Rarely do I go to Amishak al-Shatibi, Sharh of Al-Fiyat al-Malik. Um, because what we need from this podcast is not more than what's mentioned in Al-Fiyat al-Malik. Yeah. So Al-Fiyat al-Malik, Sharh ibn Aqil is what I stick to. Uh, Arabic language dictionaries and Lisan al-Arab, Tahdib al-Lugha by Azhari. Misbah al-Munir, you know, Al-Qamus al-Muhid, Mukhtar al-Sihah, Al-Mu'ajab al-Muqayis al-Lugh ibn Faris, those are the books. Kutub al-Adab, yani books in Adab and, and, and uh, Arabic literature. No, the first one is diction. The, the literature, I really, I don't think I've had to use any uh, literature-related issues in our podcast. Yeah. Uh, like in Adab al-Katib, Ibn Qutayba, 
عيون الاخبار باي ابن قتيبه اي لايك ات الكامل لابن مبرد از فيري سو اوسو كتاب اي لايك ذيز وا اي ود جست ريد باي ماي سيلف ايفن الكتاب البيان والتبيين باي جاحظ المعتزلي اي ريد ات فور ماي اون بيرسونال سيك يو نو ان اي ريلي جيف ا لوت اوف امبورتنس تو محمود شاكر وركس العلامه محمود شاكر ذا براذر احمد شاكر I like his works very uh, uh, very profound for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so these are kind of like uh, I think my initial intention from uh, kind of asking you what kind of books did you read in preparation for each episode. I think you fast the past that and as, as you've given something that a student of knowledge can take the last 10 or 15 minutes almost keep that video and use that throughout his years of seeking knowledge and understand the different kind of books. What's interesting for me is that you kind of organize your mental library in different sciences. hadith is aqida this oh, yeah. fiqh this that, that's something that you kind of have in your mind that if you come to preparing for a podcast and you know this particular issue of fiqh is going to come you go to your fiqh library and say okay is that is that how it I works know. like it's just I interesting know. to get an insight so yeah the, in terms of studying and see there's two things researcher has to be a person who already studied before mm. yeah and you can't just go to a book and just read it yourself and you're going to get misguided um well, you if you really want to learn They have to have a sheikh to teach you. So that's why I say to students of knowledge, for example, if you study fiqh ala madhhabi, according to a madhhab, like Imam al-Shafi'i, for example, you study matlabi shuja'i, you finished it with the teacher, and then you after that you done the kitab uh, Yaqut al-Nafis, and then you did Umdat al-Saliq, Umdat al-Nasik, Ibn al-Qib al-Masri, and then you did Al-Zubad, Ibn al-Raslan, and then you did Al-Minhaj by Imam al-Nawi, you finished all of that. After that, you go, go, mutala'a, go kutubs, research. You know, don't let no one stop you. Now yeah. you've studied with a, a teacher, he's taught you these books, you've gone through this program, you're free to go. Tawheed, for example, you study Thalatatul Usul, and you study Kashf al-Shubuhat, and you know, Kitab al-Tawheed, and Nawaqid al-Islam, and Usul al-Sitta, and all of those Kutub al-Tawheed that you studied. And then you study Kutub al-Aqeedah by Al-Wasat al-Ahmawiyya, Tadmuri al-Tahawi, you study all of those books. Now you should be reading الحجه في بيان المحاجة بأبو قاسم التيمي, you should be reading Usul, Sharh Usul al-Tawheed al-Sunnah بأبو قاسم هبة الله لا لك أي You should be reading uh, the Kitab Itqad Aimat al-Salaf by Abu Bakr al-Ismaili and Aqidat al-Salaf Ashab al-Hadith by Abu Uthman al-Sabuni. You should go, go. Mm-hmm. You've studied with a teacher. He's taught you these the main important framework. Yeah. He's given it to you. Researching this. Yeah. You study Nahw, for example, Al-Ajrumiyah. You've done Mutamimatul uh, Ajrumiyah. Then you did Lamiyatul Af'al. Then you went back to Qatr al-Nada wa Ballu al-Sadali min Sham al-Nisri. And then... You did Al-Fiyat ibn Malik. Why, why are you yeah. going to wait for a teacher to explain for you Mughni yeah. Labi by Ibn Husham? You don't need it. Oh. So, and now you've got the keys. When you open, for example, those books, it's not you're not you're not reading something, you're scratching your head. I'm like, I don't understand this. Yeah, yeah. You've got the foundation. Ah, of course, said, of yeah. course, you understand it. Yeah. I think, to, so to bring it back to the hot seat, one thing that's always really intrigued me is that we're dealing with contemporary issues. These are, people, these are issues that many people see are kind of like new issues that are coming up. And time and time again, we sit opposite each other and you'll bring in classical sources. And it really shows that the classical scholars of the past, the early generations, like the, some of the books you've just mentioned, they really didn't leave any stone unturned. No matter mm-hmm. what issue comes up, you could be able to bring it back into one of those books. Mm-hmm. Having said that, is there any times, do you ever look at non-Muslim sources to get really an understanding of particular topics when we're talking about you know, a particular issue we're going to discuss on the podcast? Do you ever go to the... The Western sources? 